Thank you everyone for joining us at Griffith Observatory, where it's early in the morning, for a live broadcast of the southernmost moon. I'm Dr. Ed Krupp, director of Griffith Observatory, and this cheering astronomical event is brought to you by Griffith Observatory, Griffith Observatory Foundation, and the City of Los Angeles Department of Recreation and Parks. The broadcast team here on site includes Patrick So, Matthew Berlando, Vanessa Alarcon, and Pixie Awada. Well, last night, Friday, June 21st, we showcased the southernmost moonrise. We return now in the early morning on Saturday, June 22nd, for the southernmost moonset, which no one on Earth has seen before now on the lower west terrace at Griffith Observatory. The sun rose here in the northeast just a short time ago, 5.43 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. The full moon will set in the southwest at about 5.58 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and our camera is on the southern moonset line on the lower west terrace of Griffith Observatory. Now, the moon is doing something it hasn't done for more than 18 years. Its orbit around the Earth is now tilted at the greatest angle outside the path of the sun. In this view of the celestial sphere, or sort of an earthbound vision of the sky over our heads and below the Earth, uh, we see the path or orbit of the moon marked by the two white disks that stand for the moon, and the other circle is the ecliptic, or the path of the sun through and around the sky. It's just a reflection of the Earth's orbit around the sun, but in the, the view of the diagram, we can see that the moon's orbit is tilted outside the path of the sun. We'll see this on the ground each month for the next year and a half in the positions of the most northern and southern moonrises and moonsets. The greatest excursions of moonset are marked on Griffith Observatory's lower west terrace, and the last time this happened was in 2005, before these lines were in place, when the observatory was still under construction for its major renovation and expansion. This is a view of that 2005 major standstill northern moon set with the groove in the pavement before the line had actually been laid into it. Between now and around December 2025, the moon will, each month, rise and set as far north and as far south as it ever can, as shown in the diagram uh, viewable at this moment. And the period in which this happens is called the major lunar standstill. Now, the moon doesn't really stand still. Its monthly excursions just reach roughly the same maximum limits each month for about two years. And so in the diagram, we have a representation of what the moon is doing at some point in the month, each month, for the next roughly year and a half. The sun does something similar, but does it over the course of a year, not like the moon over 18.61 years. Every June, the sun rises and sets as far north as we ever see it. In this illustration, then, off to the left on the horizon. And six months later, in December, it rises and also sets at its southernmost limit, uh, rising at the far right in the diagram. To the unaided eye, the position of sunrise and sunset at these times of year does not seem to change for about three days. The sunrise and sunset seem to stand still, and the time when this happens is called a solstice, which means sun still. Now, the moon is a lot more complicated than the sun, and each month it travels north to south and back again, but from month to month, the northern limits and the southern limits of moonrise and moonset change. The sun's limits from year to year, on the other hand, are the same. So the moon does in a month what the sun does in a year. It moves from north to south and back again. Each month, however, the moon's limits gradually change in a cycle that takes those 18.61 years to complete. During that time, the moon's limits move from outside the sun's limits, which is how we see them here, to inside the sun's limits, which is how we see them here, and then back outside the sun's limits again. And we've marked these limits on the lower west terrace of Griffith Observatory. 
The northern inner and outer limits flank the summer solstice line that points to the northwest on the far right, and the southern inner and outer limits flank the winter solstice sunset line that points to the southwest. Now, when the moon rises and the moon sets reach these limits, the limits don't seem to change from month to month. There are two periods when that happens, one at the moon's inner limits and one a half cycle later at the moon's outer limits. These periods are called the standstills and they last about two years. The moon's limits still change through these periods, but the change from month to month is small, just as the change of the sun's position at the solstices is small. Well, we're now in the season of major standstill, the time when the moon's monthly limits are far outside the sun's annual limits. The extreme moon rises and moon sets are farther north and farther south than the solstice sun rises and sun sets. In another 9.3 years, the limits for the moon rises and the moon sets will be inside the solstice points and will be at minor standstill. The monthly limits then will gradually increase again and in 2042, we'll have the next major standstill. So mark it on your calendar. Well, the moon behaves in this way for two reasons. First, the moon's orbit is tilted a bit compared to the Earth's, Earth's orbit around the sun, which is what the current diagram shows, the Earth with the moon tilted above and below the line that goes to the sun. Second, thanks to the gravitational pull of the uh, sun, the moon's orbit swivels. That changes the angle of the lunar excursion and the amount of the moon's reach. You can see the moon's orbit and the path of the sun, the ecliptic, and those just rotate with respect to each other and so cause the change in the angle on the ground. Although varying limits of moonrise and moonset are noticeable over time, most people, including professional astronomers, have no experience with this aspect of the moon. You have to track the moon systematically month after month for several years to realize the moon is doing this, and you would have to track it for several 18.61 year cycles to see and understand the full pattern. Despite the difficulty in mastering the lunar standstills, some investigations of archaeological monuments, particularly Stonehenge, have led some investigators to propose that lunar standstill alignments were designed into some ancient and prehistoric sites. This plan of Stonehenge includes a number of those lunar alignments built into the rectangle of station stones. In the 1960s, C.A. Newham and astronomer Gerald S. Hawkins identified lunar standstill alignments in the station stones rectangle at Stonehenge and constructed perhaps then 4,500 years ago. Hawkins also proposed sight lines between certain gaps in pairs of archways formed by the large sarsen stones perhaps 500 years later. This in fact is one of those gaps. This is for the major northern moon set at Stonehenge. Well, Stonehenge was not the first prehistoric monument assigned uh, a major lunar standstill alignment. In 1908, British naval officer Boyle Somerville published a major standstill northern moonrise for calendar stones in Scotland's Outer Hebrides. In the 1980s, Gerald and Margaret Pontine favored the low southern moon. That's their picture that you're seeing now. The late Aubrey Burrell was the leading expert on prehistoric megalithic rings, and he identified major standstill southern alignments with the recumbent stone rings in northeast Scotland. It's Castle Fraser there, and that's its alignment. Jack Eddy, a solar astronomer, spotlighted a major standstill northern moonrise on the axis of a prehistoric Hopewell Circle and octagon mounds at North Newark, uh, Ohio. An ancestral Pueblo uh, there's Newark right there, in an ancestral Pueblo great house about a thousand years old at Chimney Rock National Monument near Pagosa Springs, Colorado, accompanies the restricted view of the major standstill northern moonrise uh, framed by the distinctive rock pillars. Well, deliberate inclusion of lunar alignments in ancient and prehistoric monuments has not, however, been proved and remains questionable. Griffith Observatory, on the other hand, possesses in, intentional lunar alignments, and throughout the rest of 2024 and most of 2025, Griffith Observatory will broadcast selected moon rises and moon sets at the moon's maximum excursion. 
We are now about to witness live the major standstill southern moonset from the observatory's roof overlooking the moonset line installed on the Lower West Terrace and headed southwest over Hollywood, Century City, Santa Monica, and on to San Nicolas Island and the Pacific Ocean. The moon may be standing still, but Griffith Observatory never stops moving. I'm now standing on the southernmost moon line, the major standstill southern moon set line on the lower west terrace at Griffith Observatory. And that moon is going down for the very first time on this line, of course, in this phase of practically full moon. So all of you are seeing this for the first time on the planet. No one else has seen it before. That moon is already down into the haze and will disappear before long, headed to moonset just a few moments from now. Thanks for coming to Griffith Observatory and wave to the moon.
Thank you, everyone. This concludes our live broadcast, the, the first time on Earth at Griffith Observatory of the Major Standstill Southern Moon Set. We're going to keep doing these events through the course of the rest of this year and most of next at selected moon rises and moon sets. So join us back here at Griffith Observatory on July 19th when we shall present the major standstill southern moon rise from Griffith Observatory. Thanks again.